for you and me to value him, realizing that he was chosen by God and he's worthy to be chosen by us as well. Does this wording sound familiar? It should. We see similar wording to this a couple different places earlier in Matthew. Matthew chapter 3 at the baptism of Jesus. Matthew chapter 3 verse 17 says, And suddenly a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. I have to believe that Matthew, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, is not the only one who is drawing this connection. i got to believe that the people that were standing there watching Jesus be baptized by John the Baptist that day, they heard these words and they would have said, Oh my goodness, the words of Isaiah, this is the one for whom we have waited. Or also, the Mount of Transfiguration. You remember that Peter and... Peter and James and John and Jesus are up on the Mount of Transfiguration and all of a sudden they see Jesus and Moses and Elijah and Peter being Peter opens his mouth, inserts foot, speaks before he has a chance to think, didn't know what else to say, scripture says. He didn't know what to say. So he just said, hey, let's build a tabernacle. Let's build one for you, one for Moses and one for Elijah. Sometimes when we don't know what to say, we, let's do a building project. That'll fix it all right there. And it says, while Peter was still speaking, verse 5 of Matthew 17 says, while Peter, while he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And suddenly a voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear, hear him. We talked about listening, the discipline of listening in Sunday school class today. Are you hearing? Are you hearing the word of God? It's going in your ears. Sound waves are moving. It goes in your eardrum. It transmits up to your brain and you acknowledge, I heard noise. I heard something. Or are you listening? Are you obeying him? See, why is it that The people followed Christ. Why did they follow him? Because he was chosen by God. Because he is beloved by God. And because because he is worthy. Another reason that the people followed him, they may not have realized it, but we we read that Jesus is worthy. He's worthy to be judge. He's worthy to be judge. I mean, you drive around the countryside right now and there's election signs all over the place. Who's running for this? Who's running for that? Are they worthy? Are they, should they be in this position? What are their credentials? If you ever want to question the credentials of Jesus Christ being the judge of all the earth, he is worthy. Amen? Amen. And, and, and that is both encouraging and that is terrifying. I might be able to pull the wool over my mom's eyes now and then, but I can't pull the wool wool over Jesus' eyes. He judges rightly, he judges fairly, and he judges our hearts and our motives. He is worthy to be judged. We continue on in this passage. It says, again, God speaking, I will put my spirit upon him. And he will declare justice to the Gentiles. He will declare justice to the Gentiles. Sometimes, especially when you're little and you have an older brother or an older sister. And somebody's, you know, they come into the room and tell you, hey, clean up or go, go make your bed or clean your room. As a younger child, a younger sibling, what do we say? Who died and made you boss? Who died and made you boss? Who, who, who died and made Jesus boss? Well, first of all, he died on a cross for your sins and mine. He rose again from the grave. He ascended into heaven. God says that he put his spirit on him. He said, wait a second. Isn't he God? We're right back to that again. Isn't he God? Doesn't he already have the spirit? I, I understand. But God anointed him with his spirit so that in that anointing, In that holiness, in that righteous space, he would declare justice. He would declare truth. He would declare rightness. I'm amazed it doesn't say to the Jews. It says to the Gentiles. 
It's not just that Jesus is going to declare justice to the Jews. It's a reminder to you and to me as Gentile people. He declares justice and what is right to you and me. And it's from this position of the anointing of God, of God pointing the anointing of God's Holy Spirit on Jesus. There it is in Scripture that Christ Judges, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. Paul says to Timothy, I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead. I charge you. I want to remind you, Timothy, as a pastor, as, as a leader, as a teacher, I want to remind you, Jesus Christ is the judge of the living and the dead and by his appearing and his kingdom. What do, you want, what do, you, what do I want you to do? Well, here it is, verse 2, preach the word. Preach the word with the reminder that Jesus Christ is going to judge the living and the dead. What I want you to do, I want you to preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. Why is it that they followed him? Why did the people follow Christ? Because God put his spirit upon Christ. Because Christ will declare justice to the Jews and to the Gentiles. But most of all, they followed him because he is worthy. If somebody asks you today, why do you follow Jesus Christ? Why are you a Christian? Why do you claim him as your Lord? Why is it you follow him? Our answer should be because he's worthy. He is worthy. It's not about you and me. Had a chance at the uh, uh, rehearsal to talk with uh, one of the ladies that was uh, unlocked the church where the uh, ceremony was at. And she was talking about the songs that they pick for their church. She said, we are very careful, very intentional because we want to make sure we are elevating and making much of Jesus Christ. Because so many times our, our songs, our modern worship, and some of the songs we sing, even in church, are all about me, 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 me. Instead of our worship should be all about, should be all about him. Why? Because he is He's worthy. He is worthy. If he gives me not another ounce of blessings in my life, he is still worthy to be praised. He is worthy. Not only this, but they followed him not just, not just because he is going to judge, but because he is worthy. And here it is. He is worthy. He's worthy to be heard. He's worthy to be heard. Look at verse 19. Again, God speaking and describing his servant, Jesus. He will not quarrel nor cry out, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. There are so many voices in our world today. Amen? Amen. I, I, I mean, there's music in the background. There's a TV in the background. There's kids. There's, there's this person who is trying to draw you away. And, and these signs that I'm supposed to read. And these little ads along the side on your computer that you open up. I, I remember telling my father-in-law, hey, just because they say something's wrong with your computer, click here. Don't click there. But it says to click there. Don't, don't be distracted by it. Well, it's right there. I just want to click it. No, don't. There's so many voices, there's so many, there's so many entities and people out there that are trying to bid and jockey for our attention. So many. Which voice are you listening to? Which voice cuts through them all? And speaks to you. Beth and I have a little uh, thing that we do when we're out in the uh, uh, shopping somewhere at, the, at the Walmart or at the mall or whatever. If I know she's somewhere nearby I, and I can't find her, you're like, well, just call her. Sometimes that doesn't work for some reason. So instead, I use this other call and it is this. Pay attention. I don't care what's going on at whatever mall shopping place that you're at. If we're 
It doesn't have to be very far away. It can be quite a ways away. Psst. It cuts through all the sounds. And I've been where I could see her, but she was far enough away. And she's going that way. I'm not running after her. And I'll go, Psst. and she'll, you can see her. I'm like, I got her trained. And she'll do the same thing to me. <laughs> she'll do the same thing to me. She'll go, Psst. And I'll, I'll go like this, and I know she's going, I got him trained, this is good. But we do it so that, so that we're cutting through the noise and hearing each other. Why? Because she is important to me. She's important to me. How important, how important is the voice of God to you? How important is the voice of the Holy Spirit to you? When we sit and read our Bible, do we have the TV on and the radio on and we're scanning through our emails and letting it play in the background? Or are we blocking out those distractions and we're spending time with our Heavenly Father? Somebody, they were talking about this down in um, uh, Sunday school this morning and I was like, oh, this is a great illustration. How many of you have ever talked with anybody and you're talking to them and all of a sudden they go like this? pull their phone out and they start replying to an email and you're talking and you're like, hello. And they're like, yeah, yeah, hold on one second. Really? Can, can we, can I just, can I ask, how rude? Is that rude or is that acceptable these days? Rude. Is that rude? Thank you, Logan. I appreciate it. That is rude. That is so rude. Why would anybody do that to someone else? But you guys are not taking the bait. You're like, he's drawing us in way too easy. How often are we sitting and reading our devotions and our phone will go, Psst. <laughs> and we, we move our distraction or move our attention from our devotion, our time in prayer, our time with the Lord. We pick up our phone, we pick up our tablet, and immediately an hour goes by, we're looking at these cat videos and what's on sale at Amazon. All of a sudden to go back and realize I have missed spending time with the one, with the one who is worthy. With the one who is worthy. It's not that my wife isn't worthy. But if I'm not focusing on the one who is worthy, I will not be the husband to her that she needs and that she deserves. What voice are you listening to? In 1 Kings chapter 19, Elijah had run. The queen was after him, was going to kill him. And he goes and he hides and he goes into a cave and he spends the night there. And the Lord came to him and said, Elijah, what are you doing here? And he said, I've been very zealous for you. I, I've done everything I'm supposed to do. And the children of Israel, they have forsaken your covenant. They've torn down your altars. They've killed your prophets with the sword. And I am the only one left and they're looking for my life too. And the Lord said, you know what? Here's what I need you to do. The Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, behold, the Lord passed by and a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. Mark MacGyver taught me this several years ago. It is something that has stuck with me. When he played football, when there was a push on, he was on the defense. He's standing there, he's looking to block, and nobody comes his way. No, nobody's coming to block him. He knew the run was going a different way. But if all of a sudden he's getting pushed and he's getting pushed and he realizes, you know what? There's distractions. They're, they're pulling me. They're pushing me away because I'm right where I need to be and they're trying to move me out of the way. 
When there are distractions in your life that you and I, because we're all having issues with ADD, uh, ADHD, and all the other letters that go with it, we will so quickly distract ourselves, be distracted to follow the squirrel, the bright, shiny object, and miss the still, small voice of the Lord. When there's big brouhaha stuff going on and many of us are type A personalities and we want to help and fix and work and, and fix those things, could, could, it be, could it be that that is the enemy distracting us from the quiet time with the Lord that we need so that we will, in the power of Almighty God, be able to face the challenges and the struggles of our day? It's something that I have been learning. I, I, I credit Mark for teaching me this and the Holy Spirit for reminding this. When there's all kinds of noise in front of me and all kinds of stuff going on, please don't be offended, but there's times I will turn my phone off and step back and go into the prayer closet because I know I, I, I need to not be distracted. I need to spend time with the Lord right now so I can deal with whatever it is that's going on, the still small voice. Why did they follow him? Why did the people follow him that day? Because in a world of voices that are bidding for your heart, for my heart, for your attention, for my attention, Jesus will not stand in the streets screaming and yelling to get our attention. He will not do it. He will be silent. He will be still. And he will allow you to finally cut through the nonsense and listen to his still, small voice. His voice is worth hearing. And his message is worth heeding. And most of all, he is worthy. Finally, I see that he is also worthy to be trusted. He is worthy to be trusted. Look at verse 20. A bruised reed... He will not break. And a smoking or a smoldering flax he will not quench till he sends forth justice to victory. And in his name, Gentiles will trust. This imagery of a bruised reed or a smoking or a smoldering uh, flax, it is the image of those who are weak. This isn't, this isn't a knock on people who are not strong. It's the, the individual who has been bruised, who has been worn down, has been broken down, has been, has been beaten down time and time again. The smoking or smoldering flax, it's the fire that is dwindling. It, it, maybe it was bright and and. and uh, boisterous and lustry, big, big fire at one point, but at some point it starts dying down. You know what I'm talking about. And maybe you say, you know what, I, I'm, I'm like that bruised reed. You know, I used to be that fire that was like a big fire and boy, there was lots of stuff happening in my life, but time and wear and tear is just, I'm just smoldering here. I'm struggling Maybe you're struggling because of, of injustice. Maybe you're struggling because somebody has done me wrong. I love this. A bruised reed, those who are struggling, those who have been beaten down. He's not going to break. He's, he's not there to break you. He's not there to snuff, snuff out the fire. No, that, that's, that's not what he's there to do. Instead, he's there to send forth justice to victory or justice that leads to victory. I, I, I wrote down in my notes, you cannot have victory. You cannot have victory, real victory, if there is no justice. If the rights have not been, if the wrongs have not been righted, you'll never have real victory. And it's only Jesus Christ who can right who can right those wrongs. This is why earlier in this book of Matthew chapter 12 or Matthew chapter 11, we read these words a few weeks ago where Jesus said, come to me, come to me all who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. 
Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden, my burden is light. Why did they follow him? Because in a world of hurts then, in a world of hurts now, hurts from the past, betrayals, that we guard ourselves because we don't want to go down that road again, there is one, there is one that you and I can trust. And the victory that he brings, it begins with him bringing justice. That he knows our heart. He will correct and convict us of the sin and the wrong in our lives. But he'll also ultimately judge the wrong of others. There's one. There's one who's not gun shy. There's one who's willing to fight on my behalf. There's one. And he is worthy. Will you bow with me in prayer today? Why are you following Christ today? He is worthy to be trusted. He is worthy to be heard. Are you listening to his message? He is worthy to be the judge of you and of me, of the living and the dead. He's worthy to be chosen, friends. And he is worthy to be followed. Are you following him today? Not for what you get out of it, but for who he is. I pray that you are. Father, today, thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you that he is worthy. Thank you, God, that you have chosen him, that you poured your spirit into him, that he, just, he judges with justice and rightness. Help us to listen to him. Help us to follow him in all we do and say. In your name I pray. Amen.